girls. I'm trying. Three, two, four. Well, damn, don't you look glamorous. You know, I got to be the Kenya Moore of the group, you know. Oh, I heard it. <laughs> got to be the Hi, Kenya Moore of the group. Why are you sitting in the dark? Because oh, it's 11 o'clock where I'm at. Uh, and I'm tired. Oh, is that Juanita? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Is that Juanita? What the hell? Right, uh, you stupid. Like, it's so funny. I was yes. like, I told the girls, I was like, guess who said she's coming? They're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know one believe it. Uh, uh. That's so funny. So um, we're waiting for the rest of the tardy bunch to come on. Um, but people are coming. Hold on, and as they come on, I am also gonna <laughs> hop over and start the live. Let me do that. I got my faux fire going in the back with my, you know, I'm giving y'all. I love it. I love it all. Where's um, my mat? Where's my mat? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let me, uh, oh, what did I do? Hold on. Because I, I came down from my, um, let me say, my life. Rude. Hey, Jay. Hello. You look so pretty, Sloppy. Thank you. I miss your face. I miss you too. <laughs> I love your tree. That is my little baby tree. It's all right. That's all you need. Yes. Came out the garage. Uh, so did mine. <laughs> oh god. All right. And we got Willette is coming on right now. I had just started the Facebook Live. Let me turn off this camera because it's driving me crazy. I got time. Period. <laughs> Your waist was looking good and snatched when you stood up. Oh, girl, I am so fluffy right now. It is not <laughs> even funny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The camera is a lie. <laughs> yes. Because I am good. not. Cool breeze. All right. Well, right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me say what's up to everyone on Facebook <laughs> um, and in the world. Hi, everyone. Welcome to My Life Unscrewed Sip and Spill. It hi, has hi. been a long minute. Since we caught up with the cast of My Life Unscrewed, and uh, here we are. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Happy holidays. All right. So uh, we can talk all night, but we're not. I hope you all have <laughs> something to sip as we, uh, right, as we, um, you know, get into the tea. Let's get a little bourbon. Oh, she said the whole bottle, the whole bottle, the whole bottle. I see it. The whole um, bottle. Jay, where you at? Everybody has a pour up. We're sipping. Yeah, we're sipping. Do you have something to sip, Esquire? She's on mute. She might, looks like she's multitasking and talking to someone else because she got <laughs> talking about you. That's all right. <laughs> Get your cocktails together, girl. Okay, so we're gonna start because while we have, um, you know, we know each other, obviously, and there are some folks who did watch season one of My Life Unscrewed. Uh, there may be some people watching today who are unfamiliar with all of you. So let's start by just doing a round robin, introduce yourself, tell the folks a little bit about who you are and anything else you wanna say, who wants to go first? Go alphabetically. You trying to make me work? A B C. <laughs> that would be me, and I had to do that till like A B C. Who is it? <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Shamila Ray. Hola, cómo están ustedes? 
Um, and I'm me. Okay. Oh, that was very next. informative. <laughs> Okay, you know what? So, <laughs> I know. I mean, y'all know how I am about information about myself. Um, <sighs> any specific questions that come off of anything? I'm a 40 something year old single mother, single but dating. Um, I do a lot. I am a communications expert. I hate saying that. Like, anyway, communications expert, community advocate, and lover of life and uh, good people. <laughs> I work for the man by day. Um, I work for me day and night. And I'm mommy day, night, holidays, 365, all of that. Uh, I'm in, I don't know what to say. Like, it sounds so boastful. That's me. Y'all know me. I'm out okay. here. All right. A, B, C, D, F, D, E, F. Antoinette. Holidays. Nice. You started, you should have started first. Saucy is my name on the Zoom screen. All right. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. Saucy got the Martha Stewart B. Smith background going on. Whatever. Right? <laughs> <laughs> look, what the fireplace? Like, I'm trying to look with my little bookshelf and the little glimpse of a tree. She, this half, I'm so done. Okay. Kashika, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Introduce yourself. What's up? Already. Uh, I I heard most of your introduction, but I, I am multitasking. Um, uh, FaceTiming with my baby, uh, who is with her dad right now. They were doing bath time, which I never want to miss. So um, that's what that's what I was doing. So forty uh, something, none of your business. <laughs> also a mom of a 16 month old baby girl um somebody mute they see me please uh no uh, uh sorry a be a meeting sorry oh she's um, on her other phone conversation i'm like what's yes, happening here sorry who are you talking to who are asking questions <laughs> i'm trying to figure it out oh okay no oh. so we'll let you want, okay uh no it's okay i'm about to hang up i'm sorry okay, okay. i'll give you a call back <laughs> live barking okay sorry uh okay. didn't want to miss that time mm -hmm. uh, uh, mom life uh, Ritual, yes. So here again, forty-something-year-old single, uh, mm -hmm. mom to a sixteen-month-old, uh, very curious little baby girl. Um, I am an attorney. I uh, do project management currently, um, public real estate development, environmental cleanup. Um, what else? There's nothing fun going on right now. Um, because COVID, um, so I spend much of my day, uh, sitting in front of a laptop, um, and trying to entertain a baby every day, weekends, every day. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, a, a, a TikTok sensation? Uh, I tried, I tried, <laughs> but you know, I I need I you really have to focus to learn all those dances and it's really the same moves over and over, but you like you got to be dedicated like they they should get paid because they yeah. they put a lot of time they put a lot of time and energy into learning that stuff I I ain't mad anyway that's it thank you thank you all right um M Michelle Dixon that's what we're gonna call you today. Michelle Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you will. I think you call me Cougars, but um, I am uh, Michelle, aka Panama La Libra, aka Cool Breeze, as of late. AKA. And, um, and just all around cool kind of chick. Cool kind of um, I am also a mom. <laughs> I got many kids under my brood. Uh, that I've raised <laughs> along the way. Um, so mom to son, daddy to most. And- uh, Oh my. Here, 
I'm just here chilling. Y'all are haters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that. I'm also half a bottle in, so excuse me. <laughs> All right. Thank half you. Half a bottle of what? What are you drinking? Uh, so Champagne. All right. Thank you for that introduction, Sash. We oh. appreciate you. All right. <laughs> All right, um, and tell us where you call him from in the dark room. And her <laughs> name is not Taraji, for those of you who are looking on the screen. Her say. name is Juanita. It showed up as Taraji? That's yes, weird. it says Taraji. She must have been yes. the last one Zooming. But, um, so I am Juanita. Um, I am in Florida at Disney World. Wow. Uh, this <laughs> this was our last day of our nine day trip. Um, it is 11 o'clock, so that's why I'm in a dark room because everybody else is asleep and snoring, so I'm very loud. I'm a mother <laughs> of three. I have twins. I'm a seamstress uh, designer. Um, I am married happily um, and overweight and about to start a, a weight loss journey <laughs> that's my focus right now <laughs> girl i'm like i'm so flat the jiggle is so real it's yeah it's ridiculous oh and i'm on my journey to have my fourth and final child Ooh, well, oh, 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 oh. i have questions Congrats. more later <laughs> yes the question congratulations Yay. on all of that all right, um, formerly known as Antoinette, the artist known as our own Kenya version, but better, Saucy Glass. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, Saucy West, your favorite fat girl. You guys all know the tagline by now. Um, <laughs> I am a um, logistics manager by day and a plus size model fat activist by all day and night. Um, mother, most importantly, of an amazing eight-year-old and nothing's going on. I've been in the house um, using my hood backdrop as my landscape for my, <laughs> for my social media <laughs> post and that's it, trying to survive COVID. Thank you, thank okay. you. Now, what those who may be watching this later on YouTube will recognize, and those who are on Facebook Live, uh, the last time we did My Life Unscrewed, this was it. We were a cast of five, and we filmed an entire second season, and then I ran out of money. If you watch the Just Shamia show, you've heard the story, like, don't bankroll everything out of your own pocket, like, that's what investors are for, and all this other kind of stuff. But we did film a whole second season where you would have met our six cast member so welcome six cast Why, member chef Willie Fizzle in the doo, doo, house harry whoop, 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 whoop. so tell the people <laughs> a little bit about you girl <laughs> well thank you thank you um i'm hailing from uh richmond california gotham i'd like to refer to it <laughs> and up. um i am here and i am sipping on a nice petite the adult from Trader Joe's, hey. which I didn't know they carry, but I've been uh, frequenting Trader Joe's lately, and it's pretty nice. And I am here welcoming myself and welcoming all of you as well to go through this experience of my life unscrewed, because <laughs> it is definitely that. And um, I thank you for the other cast members for welcoming me as well. And I am... 40 something as well. I am single. I am a grandmother to two beautiful granddaughters and uh, my son. And um, I'm just here to enjoy myself, to bring some real to the reality of it all. Um, always representing, like I have on my soulful softball hoodie. Um, I'm drinking, you know, my Black Joy cup, Black Joy parade. So you'll always find me about the culture and everyday living that I do when I cook, uh, when I'm just out about going to the store, I'm always representing. And um, I've been working this entire pandemic, so I am blessed and thankful for that. Um, so 
um, very interesting things that have been going on and things have been changing in the food industry and catering and cooking industry. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yay, Chef Willie Bizzle. So y'all will definitely get to know her more. I want to say what's up to those of you who are watching on Facebook. I see you. Thank you for the love and support. <laughs> Yay. All right. Um, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, feel free to start typing in questions that you have for these ladies. I have my own questions I'm going to ask, but you know, oh all God. is fair game. So if you have questions, start typing them into the chat anytime and we'll get to it. But since uh, we'll let you just brought up COVID, I want to start with the reality of what we're living in. Uh, the COVID crazy, the vid, the okay. corona, your homie. Um, how have y'all been doing? How have you been living? How has your life been impacted by COVID? Um, are you sheltering in place? We know Ronita's not because she's out of Disney World on her nine-day trip. Um, yeah. <laughs> with the family uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so what have y'all been doing how is it i hate it i don't like being a teacher i don't want to teach my children anymore ever again in life <laughs> oh, no. Real talk, I I hate that. It. i'm not a teacher like mm -hmm. i'm capable of doing it but it's it's a lot and it's like if i would have it it's a lot Teachers should definitely make a lot more money than what they make mm -hmm. because it's a very stressful, I'm, I don't have patience. Like even though I'm a mother of three and I have twins and the whole nine, I have a four year old, I'm not patient. Yeah. So I don't have time for the, I don't know and I don't understand and I don't get it. If I've explained it once, I feel like you should understand this. If we go step by step, then you should understand this. <laughs> so yeah. That's that's my hope. Everything else feels about the same because my husband already worked from home. I'm a designer seamstress, so I already worked from home. So mm -hmm. that part, I just don't like teaching. Yeah, it's it's really challenging. <laughs> and then I don't know how much your kids get of of Zoom. Just the extra screen time because I've never been a super screeny mom technology y'all know how i am me and the blackberry rocking forever like i'm not into technology like that <laughs> certainly not for my kids right, <laughs> right. but um yeah it's been hard it's well been so really, for really me tough. i took them all the way out of school so they're not doing distance learning oh you're homeschooling I, i'm homeschooling mm. so i oh wow I because um That's when covid day. first hit my kids did the zoom situation mm -hmm. and it was terrible like they were not paying attention. And then it was like, I had to sit with them mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. they were in Zoom classes in order for them to actually pay attention to them. Um, I found Wally was doing a test and like a few of his answers was, was wrong. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at the answer, his answers was right. So the computer had it wrong, but they were grading him wrong. So it was like, I was finding wrong answers within the computer situation so that started to piss me off because he was you know like now his grades are dropping and so mm -hmm. i just decided to go full-fledged homeschool but and what what grade are the twins and then you have junior and what yeah. is she in kindergarten or she's in like pre-k school okay she's in pre-k so they're in the fifth grade wow right <laughs> oh my gosh they That's like middle schoolers pretty much yeah, they're 11 years old now wow and she's That's in preschool wild. so she is still going to preschool because mm -hmm. i tried to teach her and that was worse than teaching them <laughs> i know you gotta have more patience with the little yeah because i'm like I, I couldn't just sit her down and say okay you know put your alphabets in order and then walk away and go do some fractions because five minutes later, now she's building a castle with the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not. Right. So she went back to school. And then, um, so now I'm just with the twins, the twins, but yeah, fifth grade. Wow. Luckily, I'm, I'm, uh, I was a, a school genius, even though I didn't do school because I hated school. But luckily, everything that they're doing, I already know. So that part is easy, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a lot. And then sauce, I know your, our babies are the same age, a month apart. 
Mm -hmm. um, you're doing distance as well. But aside from that, I know you worked from home before this too, but how has your life changed and been impacted by COVID? Um, as far as anything with life, I mean, I'm like, now I'm seeing how lackluster things are on the end of like her resource mm -hmm. stuff because you know my daughter is on the spectrum so um as far as her getting her additional resource time her additional like speech therapy um you know everything that's assigned to her in her IEP um has not been going on um you know I've been reaching out to principal and everything else and you know but these people are not logging on to the zoom sessions so um it's very frustrating and That's terrible um and i i can't you know leave her by herself at the laptop i have to sit with her the entire time um so you know it's just like it just consumes every day and then i work grave mm -hmm. so i have to work overnight and then get like an hour or two of sleep and then get back up in the morning and then start school. So I'm still doing. deprived <laughs> as well. Doing. That's good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, that's, you know, that, and then on top of, you know, that situation, just going through stuff as far as relationships are concerned, you know, um, I lost my mother last year, so dealing with grief in the midst of all of this, you know, it's um, Too much. been very hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so it's it's been a, definitely a roller coaster. I'm very grateful for um, the support systems that I do have and, you know, even being able to sit down with you guys, see your faces after being, you know, not seeing you for so long and it helps everything helps you know when you are um in the house and dealing with like depression and all the other stuff so yeah i mean it it, it gets real you know when you are forced life is to, hell real yeah um, <laughs> be in the house and yeah. and kind of stay away in order to survive like that's mm -hmm. pretty much how you feel like because you don't know what's going on you don't know um you know, I, I have tried to get out and do certain things, take life like the park or something or a place where it's like space and stuff like that. I've went out to dinner once <laughs> with um, my girlfriends, but it was like outdoor seating and, you know, but it was just still, it's like, you feel like you're trapped. <laughs> mm -hmm. For a social butterfly like me, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Michelle, too? And I know your work, you work in the construction industry. And I mean, not to say only that, there's, I mean, so much about your life, obviously, I know. But, you know, how has COVID impacted your life at all? I mean, because um, you watch your Instagram, you'll ask me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, initially, it was really, really difficult because I'm, I am not, I'm not, I am not an introvert. And so, um, it was just hard being away from people. And uh, so I kind of went through that uh, during that initial stage. And so um, now I'm like, I'm like, I'm cool. You know what I mean? Like it's, I, I've gotten used to it now. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I've been blessed to work throughout it, which has been really good. Uh, Cause I know a lot of people are not so fortunate. So I'm really right. grateful for that. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm grateful that, you know, my mom has been able to persevere throughout it too. So, so you know, it's been, it's been up, up and down, but mostly up to be honest. So, um, yeah, just kind of trolling along like everybody else, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> and as Ronita has shifted into her Jessica rabbit pose. Um, I'm gonna with the flipping yeah. the hair and the red hair as it was laying just I'm like this bitch. Uh, <laughs> Okay, sexy at night. <laughs> All right, sexy at night. I see you. Um, Saucy, can you say hi to my cousin Jada, who swears that you don't know who she is and you've seen her at all the backyard boogies? And she's like, I said something to her. She don't know me. And she's saying hi to you in the comments. So say That's what's up to my cousin Jada. Hey, cousin Jada. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't keep me up. You know, my memory is shot. Saucy stuck up. Saucy stuck up. That's the problem. Oh. Oh. Saucy on her diva. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, so, like, oh, they like, changed their damn nickname eight times. It is what it is. <laughs> 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 all right there's look, nothing they, they, wrong they with growth appreciate the shout out that's what's up that's what's up all right so kashika how has your life been impacted by covid if at all you also i mean you don't work in construction but you do kind of work in development and cityscapes and planning and all this other kind of stuff and you're also on housing commission for city of oakland and 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 you do a lot so but how has your life been impacted by covid um, like everyone else, um, I am working from home. Um, I've actually been working from home since the end of February. Um, so as soon as COVID kind of, um, you know, really, it, when it really became apparent, you know, what, what we were dealing with, um, most, most of the city agencies just said, okay, you know, we're, we're going to do telecommuting until we get, you know, our minds wrapped around this. And um, a few months in, I think it was clear um, that it was going to be a while, you know, before anything really changed and it was going to get worse before it got better. Um, so we are actually um, at this, at this point, we are scheduled to be working from home until at least July of next year. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I, I mean, you know, just kind of trying to balance work and, uh, being a parent, um, that's certainly, uh, you know, as everyone has said, it's, it's a lot. Um, but someone gave me a piece of advice that has really been very, very valuable during these times. And, um, was it me? I give great advice. Did I no, give it to you? It, it, no, this wasn't you. Advice uh, that I, I give great advice. Advice that you, you don't give. Ask for. You give good advice, but this wasn't you. I said great advice. You okay. give good advice, but this, this wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go ahead, Shay. But, Continue. But, Continue, <laughs> Shay. But um, they said <laughs> that rather than seeking to find balance, you should look for harmony. You know. Mm -hmm. Try, try to live in harmony huh. and um because balance is you know oftentimes just impossible to achieve you're, you're not going to have balance but with harmony um it's like a symphony and each instrument you know will come in at its own time when the time is right and you know some pieces may be longer than others um but that's the way it's supposed to be you know the symbol may only come in for a split second, but, you know, in, in the bigger picture, you know, it just fits in with everything else and it's the exact amount of time. It's the right time. So that was really, really valuable to me and um, just really, really helped me, um, you know, to take off some of the stress of, you know, at times feeling like, you know, I wasn't being a great employee or you know at other times i wasn't being the best parent so that that was really helpful for me mm -hmm. um i you know i felt that i i should share that with other people that may be you know um dealing with the same thing and trying to work through it um that's the biggest thing of course you know not really going out um and i'm fine with being at home and netflix and you know a nice glass of wine or you know uh but most nights uh with the baby you know i'm i'm in bed by 8 30. <laughs> um i'm usually tired by nine anyway so it doesn't really matter but um you know sometimes i'll watch something on my phone or something like that but that that's that's my life right right there that's your life unscrewed Hashtag. <laughs> All right. And mm -hmm. Chef Will, you said that you have been working through the pandemic, of course, uh, but other ways that your life may have been impacted or is impacted by COVID. 
Uh, I definitely have, life has definitely been impacted. Uh, a lot of the restaurant supply places that I go shopping to, they've opened up to the public and mm -hmm. not just restauranteurs or people who own catering companies. Anybody can come. So what I used to be able to do in maybe 30 to 45 minutes has taken me now two hours to go shop. Um, meals that could have been put in a family style now have to all be individually packed. So it's more um, costly buying packaging and also time consuming to do that as well, but also required, mm -hmm. of course, in this uh, pandemic that we're living in. And then also uh, delivery has changed. You, you know, you can't just walk into someone's office building and deliver food or daycare. You have to stand outside. You have to have your mask, your gloves. Um, some people actually want the items in a sealed box where it comes from your kitchen, your certified kitchen. Like you can't just take it out of a backseat of a car or something like that. So there's a lot of different uh, precautions that have happened or a lot of things that people have put in place themselves to secure the safety of their employees themselves and also whoever frequents their business. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been really impacting the small business people uh, restaurants is if you weren't used to doing pop-ups and things like that, or you had a, a large clientele for catering, um, you were relying on Easy Cater and Grubhub and things like that. Some things have dwindled for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so some people, they can't really improvise, you know, but, you know, as we know, you know, if you got that really in your system, you, we improvise better than Marines. So we will adapt. Awesome. We're going to make it happen and find a way to, you know, get the job done. Uh, thankfully, World Central Kitchen has been a big part of my continued employment through this pandemic. And I don't know if you're familiar with World Central Kitchen through Jose Andreas. They go literally around the world. They're privately funded. It has nothing to do with any city, county, or federal funding. Uh, recently, a couple months ago, the Steffens, their Eat, Learn, Play, uh, or um nonprofit has supported the, the event where they uh, mm -hmm. offer meals. Curries, yes, where they offer meals. And the Black Cultural Zone is a distribution center, UC Berkeley's distribution center. Uh, in Richmond at the uh, Police Athletic League is a distribution center for free meals. These are free cooked meals by local chefs, local restaurant restauranteurs. And these are very good wholesome meals. They require certain ounces of the protein, the vegetables and things like that. So. Um, that's what's been keeping me going and I'm grateful and thankful for that. And then people who, my clients that I still have for my business, I'm so sorry. I didn't even introduce my business. <laughs> oh, I'm saying she was like, okay, hey, here, here's this me. wine glass from this business. Here's the softball league that I'm repping. I was like, okay, we'll be healthy. <laughs> that's okay but you know what that's a that's a very big point too is like black women we're so used to supporting and repping and lifting up everybody else and you know right. i'm very uncomfortable with talking about myself and promoting all the stuff that i do so i get it but we have right. to be better about that so go ahead yes we'll be healthy that is true <laughs> so i am the will be of will be healthy which is my business <laughs> i yes. do catering meal prep meal prep meal planning uh, shopping, teach people how to read labels, and also our people. It's not just for food when it comes to healthy living. It's for supplies in your home, cleaning supplies. It may be your clothing. It may be everything from your sheets to wanting to shop better, to give back, be more sustainable. So everything that's healthy for yourself is what I'd like to participate in and teach people how to do for themselves. I would love to have clients for the rest of my lives and the rest of their lives. But my goal is to teach people how to do this and be independent and learn from it and share with their families uh, how to shop communally, you mm -hmm. know, go to, to Costco and just not have everything stored up in your house for a year, you know, split the cost between people, you know, things like that. Go to farmer's <laughs> market, <laughs> you know, go when the market is about to be over, get those discounts on those ugly beaten up fruits and things that we're going to eat in a week, you know, go to grocery outlets. Because your children are going to eat all those snacks in one week anyway. We don't need to have them on a shelf for three years. Cool. So things like that for people to save money, to invest in themselves, invest in their health. Because we're not supposed to be sick. We're not. We're just not supposed to be sick in any way. And um, we are. 
I, I admit that. And some people admit that too, but they also want to be healthy or healthier. And that's where I assist. I don't force anything on anyone. When they come for assistance, I offer what I can and leave it at that. So um, again, I'm so sorry we'll be healthy. I didn't <laughs> introduce you. <laughs> it's but yeah, that is good. another, another uh, uh, Yeah, I have a real good bad habit of supporting everyone else and then myself. I'm like, oh, I'm over here. But yes, we're here tonight. So thank you, everyone. What's up, <laughs> you're on mute, class. Saucy. You're on mute. You have a question, but you're on mute. What's that? Hey, <laughs> we'll let, I think, you know, my dad. Really? Antoine, soulful softball. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you for real, for real? That's my uh, dad. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Junior. <laughs> I'm done. Wait, let me pour myself something. <laughs> Does it all come oh together? My it's a small world. You know what? It's a big world and good people find each other. That's how I look at it. Okay, well, I will be sure to shout you out when I see him next. Cheers. 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 Thank you for the connection. I appreciate right. it. And can I say one more thing? I want to say to Ronita as well. I yes. commend you for homeschooling because I have been doing that with my grandchildren as well in Zoom class and that it just chaps my hide. Mm -hmm. And I've always homeschooled every time or every opportunity I get with books that I have or information I have with the children, but actually trying to get them in a structure of the class where they have so many breaks or they don't give a certain child enough time or they're trying to right. alert all the parents like, oh, my child is shy. Can you mm -hmm. give them a moment to speak up? You know, things like that. But you have some children who they don't have adult supervision, so you kind of feel kind of I don't know. I feel kind of sad for them when they don't have an adult there with them. Right. And sometimes when I try to assist with my grandchildren and other people, I point out things to them and they're just like, you know, we're over this. Right. But then, right. like you said, it marks your child as truant or right. it marks your child as failing when that mm -hmm. happens. So that's going to be a whole other conversation on how to handle online schooling when you opt out. Right. And that's one thing that son was talking to me about, like, you know, just he, she's trying to convince me to stop being a chef and just start schooling. <laughs> but I'm yeah. like, I can I can try to do both. I'm doing my best, but I understand what you're saying. So just be ready for that conversation because it's going to come and it's going to happen because schools are still getting paid for attendance of children's. And that's even through Zoom distance learning they're yeah. still getting paid for that so when they're not getting paid for that it's going to be an issue yeah so, no i i completely um i disenrolled them so i had to file okay. an alpha and i am um the name of my school is black education academy okay. <laughs> so completely yeah so they're completely disenrolled and it's okay. like i'm complaining about it but the the good thing about it is we do a black yeah. history every week so they're learning so much of their own history that they had no clue of because you know we only get Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. they, I, I toast to you I toast to you cheers <laughs> cheers thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, yeah. Yeah, what, what resource are you using to make sure that you know they're they're going to be current as far as what they should know by the end of like grade so, five or whatever. Uh, I believe it was Shamia that showed me. If you go to California.gov, mm -hmm. they have a list of what everybody should know by each grade. Got it. So basically what I did was um, copy that and then I went through it and like for the first week, I did a test on everything. And then what they failed at, that's where I started focusing. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically how because they there is no um that was something that I found too. There is no curriculum that you can follow. Cause I thought I would just be able to find 
a fifth grade curriculum and mm -hmm. no um, businesses develop curriculum and you can pay for their curriculum but the state right. doesn't have requirements by the grade right so you right. can really right. teach what you want as long as they are at you know certain standard right. by the right. end of that year this black woman um, that, that was that was her her business um it was at the event that London Breed did in San Francisco, I think it was a year ago or something that um, mm -hmm. focused on women. Um, and there was a black woman there that was trying to um, just, you know, hand out information and flyers about the curriculum that she was developing for grades K through 12. I mm -hmm. cannot remember for the life of me, maybe it's on the website. Yeah, um, and there's, a, uh, there's a Langston Hughes, uh, I have it up in another tab and I don't want to minimize this to tell you, but I'll, I'll send it to you if you're interested. There's a Langston Hughes organization that's, uh, I think they're a nonprofit that's dedicated to black excellence and curriculum. I'm actually doing a presentation oh, nice. um, next week on that. So Ronita, I'll have to link with you offline because uh, yes. you know, we're on the private school side. And so if you're mm -hmm. doing private and independent schools, they have a lot more uh, influence on the curriculum and shaping the mm -hmm. curriculum, I think, than teachers in the public school setting, although they have some too. And so right. I am speaking to them specifically on teaching Black excellence over Black struggle. Um, and mm -hmm. so I would love to link with you, you on some of the things that you've uncovered in this year of teaching your kids. And Shay, if you find that resource, let me know, because I'd love to incorporate yeah, well. it in my presentation too. Yeah, because, and, and that's that. Um, I'm glad you said that, because that's something, it's like, all our kids learn is we we started as slaves and we're slaves and then we're more slaves and then we marched because we don't want to be slaves and the slaves and it's like what the like there's so much more to us than that than struggle um and you know Dr. king and rosa parks and peanut butter and that's it straight up like, <laughs> like so like i said we do a black we do a um i have these cards that i saw it was a, a independent black company or whatever and um it's just like a deck of cards the black with, history flash cards yeah yeah so I <laughs> those, and mm -hmm. we switch off from a man to a woman each week and i'm i let them pick and then they have to write 10 facts about the person and i make them do a whole report on it so mm -hmm. you know work on it day by day and blah 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 and it's like there it it's it's amazing how much my kids are like really like I had no idea like we did this like this woman did you know like um Taraji did um and of course I'm having a brain fart I can't think of her name but um black woman they took her cells and they're still Henry using them thank mm -hmm. you Taraji was so amazed by that like yeah. she was blown away that that was real yeah like that those sort of things that they're learning that they wouldn't know that any other way and then um for everybody that that does know me and those that don't i am like pro black like no other so my kids hear me say stuff all the time but they're getting older so now i feel like they're starting to just be like oh here my mom goes again instead of it actually being facts mm -hmm. so you know that part of it is um is good but um, everybody should read that book yeah i have it uh, the immortal life uh, uh, oh, everybody needs there. to read that that right there yeah <laughs> yeah right there yeah that's it so right here yep. on the bookshelf and look my bookshelf is not just a prop but i have that i want to say for y'all that are viewing <laughs> i need a screen is on she's just very sultry in the bedroom at the <laughs> disney world resort in florida right now so uh <laughs> i think it looks dark on facebook but she is there occasionally if there's a commercial that's bright enough we get a glance at your beautiful face so, <laughs> yes that is so much better we can see you thank you thank you but i, I know we don't want to wake the family up but yes all right yeah. so we have it's been a long time since we've caught up. I have so much that I can ask you. I'm going to get into a little bit more tea time because <laughs> you guys have all dropped some little nuggets here or there um, in your introductions as well. So I'm going to dig a little deeper with my questions. Those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, if you have questions for the ladies, please feel free to drop them in the comments as well. Um, if you have my cell phone, you can, no, don't text me because I can't see that right now. <laughs> Drop them in the comments or whatever, and we'll, we'll do more. So first, I want to start with Kashika. 
So yeah. when we saw you last um, of uh -oh. My Life Unscrewed, you were liquid sex and you know, you were dating and, and all of this. And then you just told us that you had a baby. Well, so I want to get all up in your business. So since the last time we saw you and you were dating, but you know, just being real cool and chill, what's happened? Are you booed up? You have a kid? What's going on there? Um, I, I do have a kid. That's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I am not. And how old is your kid? You have a daughter. I have a daughter, um, 16 months old. Um, she's great. Um, not dating because COVID. So I don't, I don't know what other people are doing, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not, <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's huge. Um, that's the biggest change in my life. Uh, How does it feel being a, a, a new mama in your 40s? Um, it is uh, work. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's work. So, I, and I, I, that goes for any parent, you know, you, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. You don't really know until you like get in it how much work it really is. Um, and I have a bunch of nieces and nephews, but it's different. Um, uh, it's you know something new every week. It's a new word. It's a new you know ability to climb up on something a little higher, and you know so it's it's amazing to watch. Um, but shit, I'm tired. <laughs> right. I'm tired. I don't get no rest. Um, I'm trying now to get her to actually sleep in the crib through the night. Um, so you know, we had a couple nights where she made it to like two o'clock or four o'clock. But once she get in my bed, ain't no sleep. It, it, it just and that's it. Yeah, mine is uh, eight and a half, and he's in my bed right now because it's a dead body. <laughs> Right. I'll be here. Good night, yeah. mom came down and said good night and everything. All the nerve. Uh, <laughs> um, Michelle, aka Half, uh, aka Sash. I'm stopping there. Oh, All right. So one question is, what is you just cool, a hater? You what just is what is this cool breeze mess? What is this? Where does come you from? Know, cool breeze. This is the thing. I know your mom, and I know your mom didn't raise you to be no hater, and you just a hater. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. So where, where did Cool Breeze come from? Seriously, that was a question that was submitted. Oh, seriously? Yes. Uh, because, okay, so during COVID, I was binge watching a bunch of shows. <laughs> and, uh, and I watched Blackish. And um, they said, the parents said, everybody in their friendship, friendship group has a friend named Cool Breeze. And if they don't, that means you are Cool Breeze. And so then I was like, I think I'm Cool Breeze. <laughs> so I was like. <laughs> right, well, that, is. right, right, all of that. <laughs> and I was like, y'all know I don't have no sense. <laughs> yes, we do know that. Um, Michelle, also, um, and Willette, we can't see you, so at some point you'll have to turn your camera back on, Willette, because we can just hear you but not see you. Um, so, Michelle, another question for you is on the reunion, which was hosted by Tanika Shibi Lady Blue. Shout out to you. Hey, girl. Um, so, on the reunion, she asked a question. You were dating this, this lovely lady. And she asked if you and she were married to when she quickly replied, like, are you crazy? Like, so <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was uh, several years ago. So no need to right. ask people's names or whatever. But what's up with you and your relationship status? Where are you at? Are you still seeing that person? No, I'm not. No. I Whoa. Asked well, it's a good thing they weren't married then. Right. <laughs> And is that all you care to comment on your relationship status at this point? I mean, no, I'm in a relationship, but I'm not in a relationship with that person anymore. Mm. So. Okay. Let me just say this. I saw because in the comments who was watching and I'm like, whoo. Okay. But yeah. Let me say this. Because Sh Shamia, as my little sister, you ain't shit sometimes. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because Shamia likes to, Shamia is like the master production manipulator. She knows that she is. So I know that, that for a, a full on fact. But anyway, no, I'm not in that relationship anymore. Thank goodness. Thank God. So you're in uh, a new relationship? I, say again? You're in a new relationship? I'm in a new relationship. It's going on three years now. And so, um, two and a half years to, yeah, yeah, two and a half years, three, going on three years in next March. So, wow. uh, yeah, you know. I didn't realize it had been that long. Right. right. It don't seem they, like it's been this long. They can't keep their hands off of me. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> do I hear, do I hear marriage now? What? What? Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, see you. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I, I was yeah, just there's definitely, there's definitely, you know, there's definitely been some, you know, some ring observations that I've been doing as of late and, um, she just got to get her shit together. That's all. We're going to be bride, babe. I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit. <laughs> I'm just saying. We gonna be um, right, no, I'm like, do I need to call you after this? congratulations that's beautiful yeah you know you guys know who my partner is and so um uh you know and respecting her privacy too but yeah um yeah definitely thinking about like getting it to the next step so well i know if you take it to that step i know i'm doing your suit uh, of course yes i Hands can't down. wait oh Hands okay. down. So and is, I want to be that self, why the hair has been retired? What do you say? Is that why the hef has been retired? Yeah, I gotta let the hef go for right now. <laughs> Lies. Okay, <laughs> so Ronita. Um, <laughs> Ronita, we're gonna be telling truth today. This is reality. Yes. Let me pull okay. <laughs> reality. So <laughs> thanks, half. I appreciate that. Um, so Ronita. <laughs> yeah. Last time we saw you. I'm sending I'm sending your Christmas gift back to me. <laughs> oh, right. I'm still waiting on my t shirt from the March. So you know you can't miss what you ain't never had. All, All right. right. That. Um <laughs> so Ronita. Yes. In the first season, I do expect my gift. I'm just playing. Please. I love you. <laughs> um <laughs> in the first season, we saw you go through the trial of your late husband. Mm -hmm. Um, we heard you talk about, you know, love and your love for hairless men and yes. all of that. And here you are on this family vacation, married and love with a new baby. Oh, well, she's not new. She's a pre she's four. Okay. <laughs> um, talking about baby number four, what was that journey to new love like for you? And kind of like, what's your, your message? I mean, there's so many things that you thought were never possible. Like, getting married again and finding love again, having another kid, you know, right. those are some of the things that you shared and then here you go on your Disney fantasy and this is your reality now. Right. Um, it was difficult. And, um, I think definitely without therapy, I would not have made it. Um, and I think that's something that black people as as black people, we definitely don't like to talk about don't like to explore and you know those sort of things or whatever but if it wasn't for therapy and my need to be um better because like you said i was going through the trial <laughs> and ironically found out i was pregnant while i was going through the trial uh which is crazy in itself um because i thought i was having anxiety attacks and all kind of stuff went to the doctor and found out i was pregnant um I but <laughs> it, yeah it was that it was a lot. It was a lot going on. Um, but um, I just found you have to have a want in yourself for something more. Because like I, I have some friends that um, kind of went through similar stuff with me. Their spouse got killed and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we're like 12 years later and you talk to them and they still are in that same headspace. And for me, I had twins. And there was no way I could raise um, self-sufficient, responsible adults if I couldn't be the person that they need to see doing things adequately. Um, and ironically, after my husband, uh, my first husband was murdered, 
I felt like I was supposed to be a wife. So I sought after relationships um, diligently. Like I was like, this is what it has to be. And if it's not going to be this, then, then it's just going to be a toy play thing with no hair nowhere. And we're just going to have fun. Right, there you go. There you go. And I, I want to say too. That, I've never had that expression before in my life. Right. She was just like, no, no. I was like, oh. anyway. No but I also no. want to give a shout out to uh, Bestie Devin is watching. Hey, Devin. And she hey, said, boo. I need that miracles happen every day. They yeah. absolutely and do. Ironically, my um, third child, that's what her name is. Her name is Michaela Ray, but Michaela means miracle. Mm -hmm. because up until that point I had been told by doctors and you know all kind of stuff that I could never get pregnant I could never conceive naturally because of what happened to me um when I was 22 and got kidnapped right blah 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 insides messed up so when that happened to me that was God choosing the person that I was going to be with because that's something else too um my husband today because I am remarried um my husband today is somebody that I would not, he's not the norm of what I would date, nor am I the norm that he would date. But it was kind of like, God was like, well, I don't care what you normally do because <laughs> this is what you're going to do. Because as soon as I got pregnant, I had a conversation. I was like, well, the way my womb is set up, uh, I need to be married soon. So I don't know what time you planned on proposing, but let's get this going. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know it it um it's a it's a it's a great thing because i do find myself for real happy i didn't really know what happiness was until i got here there are you know every situation has bumps and different things like that but i am extremely thankful to where my life is now and after sitting where i'm sitting now as terrible as those things were they had to happen in order for me to be here yeah. So, you know, I get that. I, I can totally, totally relate, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> on yeah. so many levels, on so many levels. Want to let you guys know, Willette is not gone. She messaged me, you know, her phone never is charged. So <laughs> she's like, I'm just charging my phone because she was doing Zoom from her phone. So she'll be back on in a minute. Um, in the meantime, last time we talked, Saucy, you were hashtag fat and free. And we're doing so much. With that, um, lots of campaigns getting, you know, national recognition for that. Are you still hashtag fat and free? And what's going on with that movement and your activism there? Fat and free is forever. Fat oh. and free is now a, it's a way of life. It's, it's become something that um, the hashtag has been used about 50,000 times now. So it's become something that women and people go to, to I need to interrupt for just a quick minute. I don't know if y'all can see this, but uh, look at this right here. Can you see this? I love it, Saucy. <laughs> just go to her can, Instagram. Okay. Go, go to the Instagram. Anyway, go okay. <laughs> Is that your, what you posted today? I already liked it. I was like, when you posted like 15 minutes, I was like, love. So <laughs> if that's what that was from today. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, but it's something that people can go to and basically see like this working mosaic of fat bodies loving themselves exactly the way they are in that moment. And also seeing fat bodies challenging their own insecurities um, and fears and kind of going out on the limb and saying, this is what I'm going to do with my body and I'm going to do it without apology. Um, so fat and free is just a lifestyle now. It's, that's what it is. Um, as far as my activism, I have been um, my first published book I had done last year. Um, it was um, and, and um, just a whole bunch of fat activists that came together and we all, you know, contributed to a book. And it was my first time doing it, and it, it was important because it is for young people. And I've always said that. Um, you know, as I go further into my activism journey, that is who I want to always target because, um, you know, I began my journey of, you know, having an eating disorder and all that at nine years old. Um, so if I could begin to target 
you know, the ages between nine and 14. Um, that's what my overall goal is when it comes to my activism. Um, and, you know, so that's what I'm working on right now as far as my activism is concerned. I, I want to say one thing about Saucy. Um, <laughs> in addition to being a bratty little sister, Saucy has a wig for every occasion. And so sometimes she has on her church hair. Right oh, now, her like hair. Her Empress online hair. I'm digging it. I like it. <laughs> but Saucy is like, oh, I can't, I can't Love keep it. up with Saucy. Love it. <laughs> I do. So you know, as as I approach forty, you know, I think that that my mother is coming out of me more, and, <laughs> and I'm just a hashtag Brenda's closet. Hashtag Brenda's <laughs> closet. Um, you know, and I appreciate all of the essence that she, you know, passed down to me when she left this earth, and um, and I'm just grateful for whatever, you know, she instilled in me, and and what will come out more and more as I get older. So. Yeah, and that's wigs. That's hair, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right, I I love it, and I love the hashtag Brenda's closet fashions too, because mother had style. Love it, and I love when you do the side by signs when she wore it and you wore it. I love that. Um, I have a lot more questions, but out of fairness, I'm gonna pause and give y'all a moment to ask me one. Nobody. Okay, let's continue. Uh, 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 oh. You asked everybody else about, <laughs> about where they were in their dating life. And so now we want to know about yours. There you go. What specifically? Uh, oh, oh, who are you dating? Are you dating? your time with and your, uh, giving your attention to? Are you dating? Not, yeah. Or are you? Is there someone you are? Somebody coming by the house. Giving you your know? attention to. <laughs> That's a lot of questions. Well, let's said, wait, maybe I should wait. For <laughs> Why are you in the comments, Stop but you're it. not on the Zoom, Will? Like, oh, where did they do no. that at? Stop it. Where they do? Y'all just see she's in the Facebook comments. Like, I'm like, where they do that at? Um, oh, she said she got a question over here. Look, y'all busy. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, there it is. Um, so it took a, it took a while for me to um, be open to dating. I was I was probably more devastated after getting a divorce than I ever really cared to admit. I um, met my ex husband very young. I was what twenty two. He was twenty one, and we got divorced. We separated when I was thirty three or so. So that's a significant amount of life you know, with someone and I was a new mommy. And, um, so when we separated, I just, I wasn't ready. I didn't, I didn't think of that. And really I was devastated. I went through more in that situation than I ever told anyone to this day. And, um, it was just a lot of healing. There's still a lot of healing that I have to do. And then, um, and as you guys saw on the first season of my life unscrewed, my eyes and hormones and pheromones were just coming alive to men. And I had a crush and I was like, oh, there's a man, bounce. And so I think um, part of me, because I was so young when I met my, my ex-husband and was with him all those years, I never really learned how to date as an adult because before him, I was in another relationship for three years. So I never really learned how to, um, to date as an adult. And so at first I was just hot and horny and um, this is after a few years. So like, this is, you know, my son is several years old and then I was that. And um, now I am ready for a relationship. And I am a, I'm a single mother to a small child. And so who's gonna be in the house for a number of years. So I'm looking for someone who, not looking like where he at, but I'm open to someone and need someone that is gonna be here for us both. And, um, yeah, I've been dating several people over the last couple of years. Um, and I love love. So I love several people, right? Um, there is one person who I wouldn't say that I'm dating, but we are friends and, um, I have very special feelings for him. 
that's different. Um, and I should probably not say anything more because again, I'm dating several people and I want nobody's feelings to be hurt, but everybody knows the truth. So that's the thing. I live my life very open and honestly, and I ain't nobody's woman yet. So holler. <laughs> all right that was it y'all tried it um <laughs> anything else before i get back into y'all is that what y'all wanted to know that that you're was... talking mad crap yeah. in, the ch in the chat okay <laughs> oh, i haven't even looked at the chat Me i need will let to oh. get to, to get back on the screen I yeah she's up there stirring the pot the she i didn't even see in the chat yeah, in the Facebook Live. In the Facebook oh, Live, that's what she's it. talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. She says, I'm on Facebook Live now. Pay attention, Michelle. She's talking to you. She, <laughs> she's like, Salsa, you got your glasses on now. Pay attention, right? She's talking well, mad let's, mess. Let's talk Again, how are you on Facebook Live? Are you not on the Zoom with us? We know, I don't we know. Your laptop got a camera on it with laughs. Is you up here talking about my glasses? Get but your life, did. girl. <laughs> All right. Um, Michelle. You, like I said, have been gallivanting during COVID. Um, one of the things that you attended was the March on Washington. And um, we also know that you are very big in terms of your activism in the LGBTQ community. Um, so what's the latest with that, with your, your activism, especially, like there's been a lot this year. I mean, as black folks, it's always a lot. People are like, George Floyd changed everything. And I'm like, that black man's murder execution was horrible brianna taylor's horrible i mean anybody even this baby um kawan bobby charles who i believe yeah. you know was lynched with some foul play there down in louisiana you know yeah. it's, it's always stuff every day yeah. being black in this country um and then two where are you at let me let me just say that let me leave it there um initially well i mean i i pretty much as soon as covid started i was out protesting right whether it was a drive-by protesting or you know walking protests it didn't matter we were out there mm -hmm. um and uh and so then when the march on washington um you know when that kind of came up and it was kind of like you know it wasn't something that had been long planning you know it was just kind of like i felt mobilized and i was like i gotta do it um it felt like it was something major you know it was the 57th anniversary and i was like yeah i don't think i want to miss this you know um, and it was great to see, um, because it was the anniversary on March in Washington, there were so many black faces out there. Mm -hmm. It was different than going to a protest here in California, right? And so it's like, you saw more people that looked like us. Um, nice. It kind of reminded me back to being, is everything okay? What's, what's so funny? <laughs> the comments. Oh. And say, I do love your hair. I just didn't say it because I'm like, when do I put that in there? I was like, it's looking so fluffy in 80s, right? right? But I know it's locked anyway. Go ahead, Michelle. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Michelle. The lidiness in the comments. That's all. Go ahead. It, it was it was reminiscent of being um, back at Tuskegee. You know what I mean? Mm. That's that's the feel that I got. Um, nice. And so it just, I don't know, it just, I just needed to be there, you know what I mean? It was great to see. And it was interesting to see that it was, um, I felt there were a lot of roadblocks put up to that march. Um, even when you were there, it was like so many blockades and stuff like that. They had, the walk was longer to get to the location. And it seemed like they put up a lot of roadblocks to basically deter us. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's like, it was nice to just see people of color saying, I don't think so, we're going to get there. You know what I mean? Um, and so, uh, so yeah, it was, it was great being there. Like I, I wanted to go to the inauguration, uh, but with the numbers climbing again, you know what I mean? Uh, you talk, you're talking about Biden's upcoming. Yeah. Like you don't want yeah. to go to Trump's back in. No, no. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I would love to see, uh, come up, you know, come, uh, Kamala get, uh, you know, uh, inaugurated or whatever, but it's like with the numbers climbing, it was just something that, you know, I had to really rethink. Um, but it's like, yeah, I'm unwilling to just sit by the wayside anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just like, what's the point of life if you're not getting out there and, and being involved, you know? I love so. that. And I know for some time, you were also involved with SF pride here. You helped us as part of the just Shamia show. Um, oh, yeah. you know, we participated, we had a, a float contingent with yeah. Chris and Ivy in uh, one of the pride parades, not this year, yeah. I didn't have it, it was virtual. Are you still yeah. involved with that? 
Not involved with Pride. I was involved with uh, I was involved with the, the SF Dyke March, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm still involved with uh, an organization called Butch Voices. Um, so I'm still active in the community, um, but I'm really this year I've really started to kind of whittle down the organizations that I want to be a part of um, because I'm feeling like I, I I am unwilling to lend my voice to organizations that are not appreciative of folks that look like me. Yeah. And so, um, so I've kind of cut off a lot of organizations. I'm still just sticking it through with Butch Voices. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm starting to look to kind of um, assemble a board for a black and brown pride for West Coast. That's and so, yeah, so I've already been in communication with folks in Atlanta because Atlanta has a black pride. Um, because I think it's time. I think it's time. And it's not, it's not anything about an attitude. I'll help. That would be great. That would be great. I'm willing to um, recruit some of y'all straighties. But anyway, so it's like, uh, it's, like a, it's not about being um, uh, segregationist in any way, right? But it's about lending the voice to the community that needs it the most, right? And so black and brown folks, we need our own space. Yeah. And so that's what that's about. I ain't helping with shit. <laughs> Me and Mrs. ain't gonna do nothing but show up and get on the float. Right. <laughs> That's Look the at beauty you. of having a baby. I'm I like, think, I can't. I can't do I it. Think, I think Memphis already has her model girl wave down pat. So I think it's good. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. Is facial good. expressions like, oh, why are they near me? <laughs> like it's harder than facial expressions at everything. <laughs> um, speaking so of awesome. space, too. <laughs> yes. And speaking of space, um, Ronita, you moved way the hell out into the country. And it was so funny. So we, we got to get you back in the group chat uh, <laughs> because the girls were definitely feeling away. You know, let's be real about it. The girls were definitely feeling away. Like, where's Ronita? Ronita always says, yeah, Ronita ain't coming. So we're happy that you're here. But like you moved out to the country. Your home is beautiful. You out there with the cows and the windmills and whatnot. <laughs> uh how do you like that like do you feel like you're missing anything living like in bay area proper you know out where we at or you so like it? i um i love it lov it love it wouldn't change it for nothing i love the quiet i love that my kids can go outside I love that I have not heard any gunshots. I love that I don't hear sirens. I love I love it. Um and the only thing that I do feel like I miss out on is uh, friendships. Mm -hmm. My friendships are basically on <laughs> because I'm so far that it's hard for me to get to anyone and, and like in person friendships. Like I still talk okay, to, I was, you know, I was catch about up to on people. My yeah. Feelings real yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. So, I mean, like <laughs> just doing stuff. And then um, before, I wasn't married and I was, it was, my twins were basically my purses. So like wherever I went, they went, it didn't matter. Like, you know, we was eating in the car here and there, you know, whatever. And now I'm a homebody. I'm a wife. I got three kids. My mother moved in with me. <laughs> so it's, um, it's just, I'm not as, accessible as um i used to be uh but the flip side of that is is i do absolutely love it i love the quiet i love like i'm doing stuff like decorating my house for the holidays i would have never done that ever in life i never thought i would be that type of person mm -hmm. um christmas is huge for my husband um i didn't even celebrate you know, Christmas, and we technically don't. We call it Presence Day because that's all we care about is getting presents. <laughs> Presence Day, I love it. So we call it Presence Day. I even got my, you know, all my kids call it Presence Day or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just it's. Uh, and I'm probably moving further away. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, what you doing to Patterson? Uh, <laughs> what? At, right. You doing no, to we're looking. We're, <laughs> We're looking at Texas, Georgia, and Maryland. Well, I love Georgia. And it, Are you trying to get to some red states? And the, hey, and he the reason- from there, right? <laughs> he came from, from the East Coast, right? He, yeah, he's from um, uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. 
Yeah, you can go. Just leave your brother here. Oh, Lord, don't nobody want him. Ooh, uh, <laughs> really, Shamia? Really, Shamia? None that. But um, and and the reason, the number one reason is you get you just more bang for your buck. You know what I mean? Like I'm just not spending a million dollars for a house for it to be at the max three thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just I I feel like California is giving me no choice. Mm. But to you know, and and that that's why I'm moving further because so it's like I was in Berkeley, which was cool. It was me and the twins. Then I had a baby, and then you know we weren't married in Berkeley, but then I had a man. And so now it was five of us in this two bedroom apartment now. Nah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, you know, the move had to happen. But like I said, the only thing that I feel like I'm missing out on is I'm just not, um, it's not easy for me to get to people and I'm not accessible. Don't nobody want to come all the way out to my house. I'll come when and, you fucking. Right. <laughs> I look, if you tell me you're coming, I will cook. Well, I told I'll, you I'll, 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 come, I'll, come, party. I'll come four weeks after you're stationary. So you've just been somewhere for nine days, you air traveling and all that. So I'll see you after the new year and y'all ain't went nowhere. I'll come right. to the country. Right. I've been to the country several times. Yeah, you have. Yeah. You have. Mm -hmm. Shamia thinks anything over the freaking Alt Altamont is country. It's the country. It is. <laughs> and, and it pass, is. And Look, if I don't. I don't mind Windmills, hosting. How? Like it ain't nothing out. Like they exit is like nothing but like land. You like where the house is at? And then you pass hella <laughs> cows. She like you go pass all these cows on the right, and then that next block you make a left. <laughs> right. And I'm That's right there. Live. I love they it though, but it's everything. it's so. It's so quiet. Like I said, we got the kids go karts, so they be driving around the block and doing all kind of stuff. Like I love it. I just, you know, you have a beautiful. Yeah, home. thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, yeah. I just I do miss the, but like I said, it's it's different too. I'm not single anymore, and you know, I'm on a, a journey to have my fourth child. So it's like, I think the focus has changed. Yeah. I feel you, because real talk, you know, when whomever he is decides that this is what it's going to be, I'm willing to go wherever he wants to go. Mm -hmm. that, the only thing that's holding me here is my mom, and I can put her in my suitcase, and she could come with us. So, <laughs> Right. Like I said, so. my mom, she's living with me now, so mm -hmm. that's it. And if we go to Maryland, she coming. If we yeah. go to Georgia, she coming, you know. Yeah, I just need so. my mama, and then, you know. Everything else, I yeah. So wherever he want to go, you hear me, boo. I'm talking to you. Right. I, I have Look. a question for you, um, Renita. Oh. Um, because I think uh, all all the rest of us only have one child. So mm -hmm. really only Michelle's one a daddy to many. You heard her say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. Oh, oh. Excuse me. So, <laughs> right. So, two of you. <laughs> Because uh, 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 another friend and I were having this conversation just about, you know, um, she is going on Vicky. Uh, go ahead. Ha having other, uh, having more children and just the cost, like if, you know, they go to college, like how are we going to, you know, afford that and not really having um, confidence that you know you would be able to to afford to send more than one kid to college and how expensive that'll be so what's what's your plan like so, I'm, um, I'm saying now and I'm sure you are too but to have you know three yeah three and, and then company, I have twins so they'll be going right. at the same time exactly so um fortunately uh my husband makes a substantial amount of money okay so fortunately, um, financially, them going to college, we're uh, fine. We're putting money to the side um, for that. If it was a situation where we weren't in the financial bracket that we are in, um, my backup is scholarships. Like my daughter, she's doing cheer, gymnastics, dance. Um, I've 
I've helped a few girls get dance and uh, cheer scholarships in the past, in the, you know, distant past, 20 years ago. But I know the, the kind of procedure for that sort of thing. My, um, my son is kind of like a mathematic genius. So I'm working on him an academic scholarship type of, you know, situation. But um, that and then the flip side of that is uh, just me being the type of person that I am. Um, if they don't choose the college road, then they don't choose it. I'm not really a college road type of person. I kind of feel like that's a trick. You know, you get locked into being in debt forever. Mm -hmm. Not for you know what I mean? Unless they choose a career. So it depends. But unless they choose a career, like if my son was like, he need, he wants to be a lawyer, then of course, you know, my daughter wants to be a doctor, then of course. But if there's other avenues of other things that they want to do that don't necessarily need that, then it'll be a trade school. Mm -hmm. It'll be, you know. So, yeah. Got it. Welcome back, Willie Bizzle. We missed you, although you were all up in the comments talking all the shit. Uh, all the shit. So I'm glad to have you back. Um, I, I certainly have a question for Willette, but does anybody have a question that they want to ask Willette? Wait, whoa, I just got back in here. Yeah, catch up. You be all right. Did we ask her about who she's dating? Please Let's go. Wait, mm -hmm. I didn't hear. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, you didn't hear? I didn't hear. <laughs> oh, I, I know how to do sign language. Uh, Shay, said, <laughs> Shay says, spill it. What's up with your dating life? My dating life is very to, um, like, halt minimum with the whole pandemic and me working these long, crazy hours. Mm-hmm. So dating, as far as like going out, going places, is non-existent. So that is, you know, that's that. Um, companionship, companionship is there, but as far as anything more, as far as like serious relationship, going further, spending the rest of your lives together, stuff like that, it's not there. I think it just is for the meantime and in between time right now. Mm -hmm. I feel that's all I can say. That's a very yeah, rough answer. Y'all be looking answer. at me for like more saucy don't. Saucy don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why y'all look to me for the juicy stuff? Don't do that. Don't and do that. And you it. know what? I think that, you know. That's what it is right now. Yeah. And the dating game is so, it's so effed up. Like, it's like for me, I'm dating in the sense of getting to know multiple people. I'm not seeing anyone. I'm not seeing like a person. Stop your face, Saucy. I'm not. I, I am not seeing a person. I'm dating, getting to know. Am and I'm not able it. to hide what I'm like thinking, I guess. I'm not. I'm not. But I think that's so important that when you go into these situations that you have the conversations and you establish like, what does dating look like to you? What is courtship? Like, what is it that you're looking for? Whatever. And then you know how you vibe with a person if you feel like they're potential partner material or not and if they're not i believe right. in telling a person hey i really enjoy spending time with you i don't see a long a future um in this in terms of you know a committed relationship but i enjoy spending time with you let's do that so what's wrong with that nothing whatever yeah so keep group. it real to keep it that's all i can say whatever <laughs> What you mean, whatever? Put your camera off. Who asked you? I was getting an apple. You gotta keep it. Because Shania talks a lot. Shania talks a lot of junk. I love your wordsmithing. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true. I, I and I know. live accordingly. I do. Does rolling of the eyes translate good in Zoom? <laughs> No, I think it may buffer, maybe. <laughs> right, like your face is gonna look stuck like that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to ask you guys this too. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do my life unscrewed is because 
when we first started this, one, I love y'all. And I, and I know that I know some bomb ass, super dope, successful black women. Um, and the images that I saw portrayed of black women in reality wasn't anything like the black women that I knew and what friendships look like and how we behave when we go out and all this wasting of alcohol and throwing it everywhere. I'm like, it's criminal. We, we like <laughs> get fed when a drink accidentally tips over, splashes as we're walking or the, you know, the, the server is scooting our martini glass and a little spills out. We're like, can you make another? I need all <laughs> drops. So <laughs> just like, anyway, all of this different stuff that we saw out there, I was like, that's not what friendship is. That's not what sisterhood is. That's not how black women really are as far as I know. So the hope was to put out better representation of mm -hmm. black women. But since then, what are your perceptions of what you've seen specific, specifically in the reality space? I think in the scripted series, it's, you know, subject to, to that, but in the reality space, um, or Instagram, which is also reality, like as in the TV part, like, what are you seeing largely represented of black women? What are the images that you see that are resonating on a large scale with, with folks and how they think about us? And do you still feel that there's room for my life unscrewed? I see that the goal is to be a stripper, prostitute, marry rich and be ratchet. Like that's it. Yeah. Instagram, Twitter, reality TV, don't matter how much money they give you, you still going to be a black bitch who twerk whenever music come on and you're going to argue and fight. You're never going to have, you're going to lie and say, because I'm classy, you know what I'm saying? I don't do this type of shit. And then you're going to fake fight. And if you're on Instagram, you got to be naked and show the whole crack of your ass. Mm. And is there room for a group of women like us um yes but i don't think it would ever make it mainstream that's not my goal but i hear you but i'm just saying like like even even if it wasn't us if there was another group and that was you know the goal or what have you i don't think this sort of um image would make it unless we were um christians and holier than thou Hmm. that would be the only way we would make it a uh, mainstream mm -hmm. Where saucy saying? has a saucy has a church wig <laughs> uh, <Ms. laughs> and we actually <laughs> recorded her in her church wig but, that's what i'm gonna say now <laughs> y'all wait a minute i, I and I, i'm actually I'm gonna, gonna agree and disagree with Juanita. um i agree that maybe in the reality um television space and so, and on Instagram, depending on just kind of what, you know, what you're paying attention to, although there is a lot of it, um, you know, the, the pressure for women to show everything, bear everything, you know, that sort of thing. But I think um, in the last few months, um, and, and, and kind of, you know, definitely following um, the murder of... Um, Mr. Floyd, um, that there has been a calling out of how a lot of these brands are portraying Black people and um, calling them out for not um, working with Black brands. Um, so I actually have seen a change in, in the way black people are being portrayed, not necessarily in the reality, reality TV space of, you know, as far as what's on right now, um, you know, what's, what's on mainstream media, um, VH1 or wh whatever. Um, but I, I have seen the change. So I think, um, I think that it's more likely now, um, that there's, there's space for, something like my life unscrewed um, more so now than there was, you know, in the last few years. I, I, I think, um, you know, yeah, there, there's just more, more so of an opportunity now than there was. Yeah, and Saucy, did you want to chime in and add something on that? Um, I, I do agree. I think that um, as far as us being 
you know, loud and proud about who we are um, in all facets of our blackness is definitely being um, celebrated more. So I think that there is space to do it. I think that um, it is all about timing and, um, and it may be our time now. It may be our time three years from now. But I think that it's definitely always a space for positive black women to be celebrated, whether it be um, in a web series. Um, we have, um, you know, Issa Rae, right? mm -hmm. that is like the biggest person who I can think of right now who has a show about realistic situations with black women and friendships and, and family and, you know, and they're going on their fourth season doing this. And, um, and I, and I, I believe that people see a little bit of themselves in all of us. We are very, very different people. <laughs> like we all have very strong opinions. And I think that, um, these youngsters today, need to see that they can be eloquent and have a you know intellectual conversation without calling each other bitches and you know and and fighting so i think that we we need to move more toward bringing that to the forefront and um and having that be um, something that's attainable in in this day and age and i'll twerk for him a little bit oh we all twerk <laughs> i'll twerk <laughs> video i don't know how to that i just move well but i officially I cannot twerk y'all know shay no she's put me on the spot be like go and i'm like <laughs> actually i have, I have a video Rodina i have a video of you get out the car <laughs> yes i do i wish this I'm was with everybody don't worry renita booty is iconic <laughs> now see i didn't say i couldn't twerk <laughs> I can't I'm just saying that shouldn't I'm be the saying, only option. She makes her clothes a certain way because she know the booty is iconic. Oh yeah, I, you know I love ass. <laughs> <laughs> there on the wedding day, I see what you wore for the first day. <laughs> yeah, your wedding was very lit. I'm still waiting oh, the, for well, the, the, the next after party for your wedding. wedding. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna do a um a redo at seven years. Oh, I thought you meant next year. I'm gonna go come on, let's go. Right. <laughs> right. Let's right. go. After let's the bed. After the bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we set uh -huh. the party down. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time. It was a good night. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Um the other thing I'm hoping is, you know, and, and I'm sad to see, you know, women in their 40s trying to be 20 again. I don't want to be 20 again. I, I love and embrace my auntie status. Um, and I see like in a lot of television scripted series, films, whatever, there's a void. It's like you're, you're, you're either in your 20s or teens and young and hot or you're Meryl Streep and, <laughs> you know, or... <laughs> You know, Loretta Devine. Who is Mel Street? Exactly. Okay. Or Loretta Devine. Or, you know, that's why I was okay. like, the black people, right? I'm, I'm on my way. You know, or, or, you know, like that. But there's there's so much life that happens. And I swear that this this season, and Satsi, I know you're the babies. You're almost to your 40. The rest of us are there. But it's so much richness. 40. I have no, I am already claiming I'm 40. Six months. Yeah, so this upcoming birthday will be your 40th, right? Don't be mad. I'm 40 already. Okay, well, claim it then. I was 40 <laughs> until I was there. Like, I'm like, right. I'm 39, right. 39 in seven months, you know, 39. Oh, you know? 40 <laughs> is fabulous. But at 40, you're officially on auntie status. I embrace it. It's great. It's so great because I'm so not with the shit. Um, that part. <laughs> <laughs> um before we wrap up just two more final questions but again i'm gonna pause before i ask these last two questions give you guys an opportunity to ask me anything go anything when you make a cake next year after <laughs> you do it. easy all right that's good so like um that. general question what do you miss what do you what what do you miss? 
just period however you choose to answer it what do you miss hmm socializing hanging out with friends yeah i think being able to go out and just have a drink and being free yeah being free because it's like with this whole new situation you can't like even though i'm i mean i'm at disney world obviously but you know (laughs) we have our masks on you know i'm like holding the kids real close and um one of the days the park was like crowded so we left because you know my dad is here and he's older so he's like panicking and you know it's just like being free mm-hmm. it, it would be nice and um you know we came because i needed a disney fix that damn bad but i'd rather be at disneyland you know what i mean like even though disney world is disney world it's amazing blah 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 but i like disneyland better so it's like just the being able to go in the car and go to a store and not have to wait in line to get in the store mm-hmm. you know what i mean like just ugh, yeah that (laughs) i miss service i miss going with my sister and sitting at the bar and having her prepare oysters for me you know who i'm talking about and Mm -hmm. she has to squeeze the lemon on there for me and the hot sauce and being served drinks and just sitting and relaxing or sitting on my laptop and working in a place for hours and just being served and zoning out i miss that other than that i'm a homebody I'm at the yeah. house. This is this is where y'all come see me. So you know, I you miss know what I miss. My family, but what's up? I miss wearing heels. I don't miss that. I love sneakers. I, I, I miss wearing heels. I, I used to wear heels married, in high school. Girl, you better be wearing that. <laughs> I'm too big. I can't. They hurt my feet now. Mm. So I miss I miss being able to wear my heels all day long and my feet not hurting. I hear you. Sorry. <laughs> You have a Blackberry. It's not surprising that you're enjoying solitude of COVID. <laughs> I'm an only child, you know, and I this way. I don't miss, I don't like sharing space. And so I'm, I'm my homebody. I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all anyway. You know, it's, I miss, you know, the backyard boogies were cool. You know, I miss having that and having the family over for the holidays. But other than that, I'm good with this life. Like I've been waiting to work from home or work from anywhere mm-hmm. forever. And I swear I'm never going back. Well, that miss is going out dancing. She's back off of the, I don't know. She's in the comments, but she's, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Willette, but she misses dancing. Period over here acting like she on the underground railroad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> y'all, y'all keep telling me what you miss. And also, what do you look forward to? I look forward to losing weight and getting back in my heels. <laughs> All right. What else? I look forward to being able to go to restaurants. And like you said, the service. I look forward to Disneyland. I look forward to buying a bigger house that has an in-law house on the property. I look forward to my mommy moving into her own space. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I look forward to my children being able to go back to school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is definitely plus one. <laughs> uh Esquire, what do you miss? What are you looking forward to? Um, I do miss CrossFit. So I CrossFit I'm looking Barbie. forward to um <laughs> just that. It, 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 being able to go back with no restrictions, uh, not having to worry about catching a deadly virus. Um, as I said, just going out and being able to, you know, have a drink, catch up. Um, I do not miss my commute, mm. but I do, um, or my office for that matter, but I do miss, um, having that opportunity to just take a break during the day from work. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, working from home, it's just really hard to kind of find 
that time unless you really are just, you know, really strict about it. You just kind of end up working throughout the day. Um, so I, I, I miss those breaks during the day and, um, you know, having the camaraderie with the coworker. Um, yeah, I miss that. I don't miss that at all. I hear you. <laughs> only, only a few coworkers, not most. Okay. <laughs> Zoom is fine. Uh, <laughs> Antoinette, what do you miss? What do you look forward to? Uh, and getting I miss going on dates with my boo, and I miss fashion shows and all things fashion. And I absolutely miss my backyard football. And I'm looking forward to hopefully the kids being able to go back to school and be safe. I'm not going to be safe, and I'd rather her stay at home. Um, looking forward to getting back to some kind of normalcy in life. Not feeling anxious all the time. Like, literally sitting in front of the grocery store, like, in the car, like... Like I like I don't want to feel like that no more. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to feel anxious anymore. So, all right. And um, Michelle, what about you? What do you um, miss? What do you look forward to? Um, I well, yeah. Like I said, I miss socializing and uh, you know hanging out with friends and. I miss going back home. I really do miss going back home. I, I really, really miss my family. Um, and uh, what I'm looking forward to is um, actually I'm looking forward to see what changes uh, the new administration can bring. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing um, the changes in society and life that this whole COVID thing will bring about. Um, you know, because if we were able to put homeless folks in hotels during COVID, you're gonna have to explain to me a hard time, you know, a, a hard way in putting them back out on the street afterwards. Yep. So I'm looking forward to see what, what I'm looking forward to see what kind of changes can come about with that. You know what I mean? I'm looking forward to Trump going away. I'm looking forward <laughs> to don't go away. I'm looking forward to seeing some jail time, hopefully. Uh, for anybody he pardoned anybody. himself. He ain't going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and all his kids, um, right? Right. That He's, fool crazy. Uh, He's smart. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to just seeing what life what life will bring, you know. So, and hopefully continued blessings for everybody. So. And we'll let. I don't know if you're still on audio. Can you talk to us? I'm on audio. Okay. All good. What do you miss, and what are you looking forward to? I miss dining out. I miss going out and dancing in a crowded club. (laughs) So I do look forward to that, but being what it is as far as this rate of cases going on, um, I don't know if I look forward to that. So I'm trying to figure out something else I miss. And so I'm trying to stay more in contact with family and reaching out to family members. And so I don't want to miss something that, you know, that I inevitably might get in trouble for trying to get back in my life. So I'm just trying to keep it real so I can keep myself together. But yeah, dancing, definitely. And dining out, definitely. Yeah. And I've shared like those couple things that I miss, like service at a place, like Mm -hmm. sitting there for hours and just being served and Exactly. You know, having, having the people I love here. But aside from that, there's not much that I miss because I live my life intentionally and fully every day. And I, the people that I love are still in my life and still, you know, I'm in contact with the things that I like to do for the most part, I'm still doing with the exception of travel. But even that, like it's, I'm enjoying where I'm at and being home and having this extra time with my kid in terms of what I'm looking forward to. I look forward to continuing to grow um, and stretch myself and be challenged. I'm looking forward to continuing to serve my community. Um, I'm looking forward to um, being somebody's woman again. I'm claiming that. 
Yes. Oh, like, All right. <laughs> I look forward to that. Like, I'm, I'm great in that situation. And I'm really, really ready for that. And um, I'm raising a young Black man who needs another, who needs a, a Black man in the house to teach him about that Black man life. And, um, and I really, really want that for my son. Um, and that's something that I never had growing up. You know, my uncle was that father figure for me, but he didn't live with us, you know what I mean? And um, I really want that for my son. And, you know, that love for myself that I feel like it's palpable, like I feel that it's coming. So um, I'm just so excited for whatever God's gonna do in my life. And, I look forward to another season of my life unscrewed with y'all. Yes. 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 I don't yes. see no head nod from you, Esquire. Well, let what you say. Sauce, what you say. Are you yes, right? ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. My right hand is high. We can't see you, Will let. We wouldn't know. I said, I said what I said. Shay, my right <laughs> hand, what you say? New mama, what you say? My right hand is high. I can't see. Yes. <laughs> Ike, Ike, you said yes. <laughs> Ike, did you say yes over there? You all know you your nickname me? now? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Sure, you talking to Ike? You talking to Ike? Yes. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I said yes. All right. So y'all heard it here. The cast of My Life and Screw said yes to another season. So um, hopefully we can start recording that in this new way, in this new socially distant universe um, at the beginning of the year. Um, I want to thank everybody that's on Facebook for watching. I know it's a work night. It's a school night. It's all of that. Thank you for staying up late with us. Thank you, Ronita, for um, dialing in and staying up late because you are three hours I'm ahead of us right now, <laughs> you know. Thank y'all for coming through with y'all bottle service. I'm here with my little glass and y'all came with bottles on deck and I appreciate that. But seriously though, I appreciate the sisterhood that we have here. It's not for the cameras. And that's what I think makes it so special on camera is because we're, we're real friends. We love each other. Um, we support one another. Y'all support me. I appreciate you and um, more greatness to come. Yep, yep. Oh, all right. So, uh, good night, people. Till next time. Oh, are we good out of All right. Good night. <laughs> See ya. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.